previously. You are not playing what I think you're playing. I can be, I, 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 Clearly, I'm playing some wing beast. On Progression Series Season 2. I mean, I would feel so angry right now, but... <laughs> oh, you have three? Oh my god. I mean, I'm gonna synchro for seven into X-Saber or Bellum. Let's oh my go. God. No. Ah, you mean to tell me I've gotten three beasts and five do lords? In this series, both Nim Nim and myself will be opening 24 booster packs or one box of a core Yu-Gi-Oh booster set. We will build a deck and play a best two out of three, and the winner will receive a small prize to upgrade their deck. However, However, in each episode, we will open another box of the next set that was released moving in chronological order, constantly upgrading our decks before dueling each other at the end of each episode. But this time around, we'll be introducing side sets, a new banning system, and plenty of other fun surprises that you'll just have to watch to find out. This is the Yu-Gi-Oh! Progression Series Season 2. If you want 5% off any singles or sealed product, click the affiliate links in the description and use code SEMO5. And clicking the TCG Player affiliate link before you shop helps support us to provide you with more amazing content. awkward seeing two bannings in the beginning, right? Alex earned his banning, though. He has lost three games in a row. Happy to give him whatever card he wants in my card pool. He can remove anything. It doesn't matter. We are still on pretty even foot to this day. That's what I've been saying the last few times, which make this ban a little bit more difficult. I think we have to start targeting just individual cards that uh, either of us, like, both have that maybe opens up a strategy uh, that maybe the other person can't access because of the lack of the card. There's the discussion to ban mutual stuff like Harpy's Feather Duster, big haymakers and bombs that we both have that are just very frustrating when they resolve. I don't think we're at that point yet. I still like to play with the powerful cards too. Remember, I resolve them sometimes. I know Alex always has Raigeki because he's that good at the game, but the times that I do have it, it, uh, it swings the game. They're frustrating when they happen, but I feel like once they get too frustrating to the point, we'll just agree to like gentlemen out of them or judgment them out of the way. Um, so whenever that time comes around, we'll deal with those then. But cards like Pot of Greed, Feather Duster, I don't mind having them in the game. It makes them more fun. A lot more variance. So with a little bit of thought, I decided I'm going to remove one of the only things that Alex has over me. And it's a very frustrating strategy that I hope he doesn't queue up anytime soon. I'm going to ban Gravekeeper Descendant, the one Gravekeeper card that he has that I do not. We are on the cusp of Gravekeeper Recruiter, which gives that deck a whole nother breath of fresh air. Paired with Descendant, there's a lot of cool plays that deck can make. I think maybe just nipping it in the butt here, kind of getting him off those ideas, maybe think a little something outside the box, uh, will give us an advantage. So since I do not have a copy, I'm going to remove Gravekeeper's Descendant from his card pool. Let's get into Duel's Revolution. Well, well, ladies and gentlemen, wasn't expecting to find myself in the banning, to be completely honest. Uh, the last few games have not been going my way, and to be fair, I haven't been doing myself any favors. But here we are, and uh, honestly, I think drastic times call for drastic measures. So, Gage thinks he can use my Black Wings against me. Well, if I'm not going to be using them, then no one is able to use them. So, for my banning, I am going to ban Black Wing Bora the Spear. We are going to spear this deck into oblivion and black wings will be no more from the progression series once and for all this is gonna be an exciting episode i can't wait to see what we got let's go ahead and throw it over to gauge a three win streak it's been a while since i've had one of those let me tell you i don't even care that i had to sit across from alex in the banning today and we both had to remove one card from each other's pulls bow the spear Hardly knew her. I'm done with those Blackwing strategies. I got the one-off revenge win that I needed for all the hell that I got put through in Season 1. I'm really feeling like I'm in an element of my own. I feel like we can't lose, and especially with the deck that I have built today, I think it's going to be a slaughter. What could also be a potential slaughter is what I get on this wheel today. Again, anything on the wheel is, like, absolutely huge. I just want to avoid, like, the banned tickets, and I think I've got enough redoer tickets to go around. Any other slice on the wheel could be huge, so let's see what we can get today. Give it a couple clicks. Really looking for a Starlight or a Promo Wheel. Tons of opportunities with those slices in particular. Um, and I can never say no to an unbanned ticket. But a Wild Card Super? What was the last set we opened? Gold Series? Hidden Arsenal. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's Hidden Arsenal. <laughs> it took... I got excited when I thought it was Gold Series. 
Ah, I gotta take a card from Hidden Arsenal 2. Go figure, my luck is always shit when I really need some good cards, right? There's not a lot in Hidden Arsenal 2, but I think we're following the same role with the uh, the gold series that we did, where since there's only two rarities and there's not four as it was on the wheel there, uh, I get to pick something uh, from the secret rare category since we got the upper echelon of it. No, did we? No, we got the lower echelon. Rare and super. God, I get like a fucking super rare. I actually do get... Scammed! Oh my god, bro. <laughs> How can I do- Alex gets Starlight, he gets Snatch Steel. I haven't spun a Snatch Steel this entire season. Oh, god damn it, bro. I don't even know. Give me an Aturia Rose Whip. I'll make it work. <laughs> Give me a Rose- Fuck off, dude. I can't- Let's get into Duelist Revolution. Unfortunately, not a great wheel spin. But today's set is insane. Duelist Revolution, one of the most iconic sets in Yu-Gi-Oh's history. Uh, I'm really excited to open it. Lots of great cards in this set. Last episode, we don't talk about last episode. We don't talk about the fact that we punted the first game entirely. I don't know where my headspace was at. And we don't talk about the fact that Gage was playing Black Wings. And uh, hopefully things are going to be different this time around. Now, Duelist Revolution is today's set, released on August 17th, 2010. And you might think Duelist Revolution and think to yourself, isn't that set crazy? That set has Pot of Duality. That set as Solemn Warning, that set as Effect Failure, and you'd be correct, and those are like the only three good cards in the entire set. Maybe I'm being a bit harsh, I mean looking at the super rares, there is Scrap Archfiend, which is like an okay generic synchro for us to access, but like everything else in the super rare slot, not particularly great. I guess there's some fun stuff we could do with Wiseman's Chalice. Uh, the ultimate rares, we'll skip those because those are obviously duplicates. The rare slot, again, like nothing too crazy, like the scrap stuff is okay, Horn of the Phantom Beast is kind of sick, I suppose, but like, that's it. And then going down here, we have the Ghost Rare, which is like arguably one of the worst Ghost Rares ever printed. Secret Rares, yeah, Duality's fantastic, but uh, everything else in here, I don't really think we want most of this. I guess like Ref Panel would be funny. Miracle's Wake is like okay, but like everything else is like kind of whatever. And then the Commons, like there's some okay stuff. Like, I'm really trying to find the silver lining here. AD Changer's like an okay card. Uh, Double Cyclone, I guess? Yeah, it, it's looking a bit bleak for today's episode in terms of cards that can really turn the series around. But, if we are lucky and do pull one of the three best cards in here, then that'll be a nice card to add to our collection. Speaking of adding cards to our collection, we do have to open our uh, three pity packs, being Turbo Pack 3. So let's flip them up, see what we get for our first one. Uh, Retiari, I don't think Glads are online at all. There's another Steelacan though, very funny. Uh, no Colossal Fighter to go with it, though. Second pack, Dark Eruption's kind of neat. I think we're good on Kaikus and Cloak and Dagger. And the third pack, we get another Kaiku, a Diamond Dude, and another Retiari. Uh, that's all going into the bulk bin, because we don't need any of it. We've got 24 packs of Duelist Revolution to open, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get into it. I hope you get a Potter Duality, man. That would be so hyped to see. One of the most iconic cards of this era of Yu-Gi-Oh. A beautiful secret rare that I'd love to see pop up. It looks like we're not getting that as our secret rare. We're getting Miracle's Wake, which I forgot was a secret rare. Target one monster that was destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard this turn special. This is, like, not good. That it, I, I will say it is not good. And then Delta Flyer's okay. Delta Flyer is probably better than Miracle's Wake. Summoning Curse, the Corey McDuffie special. Rest in peace, my guy. Synchro Fusionist is actually huge. I was talking a lot about this a lot on stream. I think this is one of the more unexplored cards, something that could definitely come up later on in our series. I just think this card has a lot of potential. If you use it as Synchro Material, you're able to search a Polymerization or a Fusion card and add it to hand. We have one card in particular that is very banned right now that has the word Fusion in it. Can anybody guess what it is? I'll save you the time to think. It's Dimension Fusion. Dimension Fusion is quite powerful. You can search it with Synchro Fusionist. That's kind of neat. Elephant is a common that has had some niche use. I think it's because it's a level 2 beast. And Tribrigade recently tried to do something with it. 24 packs of Duelist Revolution coming right up. Uh, should be a rather quick opening considering we know what we're looking for here and it's all down here in this corner. Uh, Hypnocorn's not a terrible card, but uh, again, there's plenty of other ones that we are wishing for. Scrap Golem's not bad. I mean, that could actually be useful later on for if like Orcus is a possible strategy. It was in season one of Prague, so having this is actually not terrible. Okay, well, I didn't need two of them. We just needed one Scrap Golem and we were all good. Synchro Fusionist is quite funny. There was like an entire deck at one point, I believe, that centralized around this little card, but uh, I don't think we have the materials to make this deck, nor do I think it was from around this time. I think that came out way later. 
Scrap Golem and AD Changer. I'm looking to get three AD Changers because this can make some absolute cheese with Jar decks. I know it's super integral to being able to flip their battle positions. Um, and then Scrap Golem actually comes up a lot later. This card's really nice. And of course, weird Scrap decks. Uh, later on down the line, when Scrap Wyvern gets released, this doesn't even have its first reprint. So this is a nice card to get. Horn of the Phantom Beast. I was looking at this one too. Great rare card to be able to pair with Gladiator Beast. Again, still something on our shelf. If we can pull an unban and maybe unban Gladiator Beast uh, bestiary. There's always potential there. Uh, great card to have for that deck. Second horn. All right, that's pretty good. I'd, I'd like actually three horns. I think that'd be pretty good. Haven't gotten many hollows. I think the secret that we got at the beginning is the best thing we've gotten so far. I think that's actually it. I haven't gotten anything else. You know, Delta Flyer is actually not a terrible rare. This card is actually kind of relevant for when we get to like Dragon Rulers and stuff later. The fact it has like level modulating capabilities is quite good. And so uh, a bit of an inconspicuous card, but I'm happy to see this. Unfortunately, we're about halfway through the opening and uh, that is our first hollow of the entire opening. That's what I was just about to say. Uh, Scrap Storm, not the one that we want. We're looking for either an ultra or a secret rare, but uh, I guess we'll take it. That's our first hollow. And there's an ultra rare. I guess we're getting a little bit closer. Closer, but Voltic Bicorn is not the card that we want, sadly. Uh, a little bit too difficult for us to summon, and uh, I don't even know if we want to, even if we could. Another super rare in Paradox Fusion. Again, terrible card. We're not going to be playing it. At the end of the day, there's only three good cards in the whole set. If we get them, we get them. If not, I don't think we're really missing much. Another AD changer. I think that's a second. I think that's a second summoning curse, too. Coming on the last four packs here. Hypnocorn. Shout out to Vlad. All right, last two packs. A Guts of Steel. Anything big in the close? An Amazonist Village. That was really not good. I got like none of the really iconic hollows. Cards like Solemn Warning, Potter Duality was stuff I'm looking at. But I think I scored pretty well with the rares, right? I got one Synchro Fusionist, which is pretty good. Two Horn of the Phantom Beast, above average in the Scrap Golem. Which is all good stuff for later, because I don't think those nail reprints until rather on later in the game. But there's so much potential, man. There's like Scrap Dragon, Duality, Warning. Do I spend a respin on this? You know what? I'm known to gamble. I think we're pretty deep into 5Ds anyways. We should get three more at the start of XYZ era. Let's spend another one. We're going to go for 24 more packs of Duelist Revolution. Hopefully this time, you're a little bit more lucky. I hope I don't get shafted and not get like the rares that I got before. They're pretty good rares, but I'm looking for better hollows. Duelist Revolution, can we do better the second time around? Oh my god. <laughs> Dragon Knight Draco Quest. <laughs> the ghost rare, of course. Go figure. And Hypnocorn. Shout out to Hypnocorn. Scrap Beast. Getting a little bit better of the scrap cards here. Level 4 tuner. Uh, Scraps was one of my first competitive decks. Fun fact, I actually took this deck to a locals, and then I got it stolen from me because I left it there. All my fault. I really can't blame anyone. Tenth pack in. No more hollows, and I haven't gotten the good rares again. I'm actually kind of upset. I really want Synchro Fusionist. I think there's something cheesy with that. I really want to pick one up. Delta Flyer. Oh my goodness. There. Okay, there's the refund on the Synchro Fusionist. I'm happy to pick that up. Love to see some Horns of the Phantom Beasts again, along with some Hollows, which just, for some reason, are avoiding me right now. What's the deal? Where are they at? Golem. Okay. Yep. All right. This is looking like a repeat of last... Golem. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This is looking like a repeat of last time. <laughs> <laughs> That's the hollow I get is friggin scrap storm and it's a super rare. I got four more packs left I better see one more man. Otherwise, I'm gonna get real angry. This refund has not been kind to me this refund Stop heirloom. What the fuck am I? I'm not gonna play Amazonist. Oh my god, bro. Okay last pack We ended up worse than we started now. I'm down two horn of the phantom beast and now. I'm just sad Oh, well, I mean, it, I'm not going to act like it hasn't happened. I think Alex has re-ruled for zero cards in particular at one point, so it is what it is. I remember there's a point in Yu-Gi-Oh's history where uh, Summoning Curse was actually quite hyped up in the community. I think it was played by some, like, top-level players, and uh, people were going crazy for this card, because I think it only had a printing in Duelist Revolution, and it ended up being, like, this ridiculously expensive common for a very short period of time. Very funny times in uh, Yu-Gi-Oh's history. All right, you guys, only a few packs left. And uh, honestly, this is about what I expected from this set, although I wasn't expecting to get a secret rare. Sadly, it is not the secret rare that we want. It is Psychic Nightmare. This needs, what, a tuner and one non-tuner Psychic Monster? So that's not, like, impossible to make just because we have, uh, what is it, Krebons? That's actually kind of doable. Let's see what he does. Once per turn during your main phase, you can pick a random card in your opponent's hand, call what type of card it is, monster, spell, or trap. If you call it right, this card gains a 1,000 attack until your opponent's 
end phase. So like, eh, I mean, it's a level six. And if we can make it like, I guess there are worse cards we could have. It is what it is. I guess like, you know, there are worse secret rares we could have pulled in this set. That's that's 100% fact. Let's see what we get in our second to last pack. Uh, that's like our ninth scrap golem. Fantastic. Just what I wanted to see. And nothing else too crazy in the close. Okay, well, we ended up getting one secret, one ultra, two supers. That's like, what, about average for like a booster box from this time? I'm not going to respin this. We'll just save it to the collection. It's not worth respinning just to try to get like one Valor or one Warning. I guess it's doable, but I just, I don't think it's worth a redoer ticket. So let's get to building. I've got some ideas. Alex had a pretty cool list last time around. I think we could do better. This is my take on Welladad, but it's actually technically I wish I was dead's take on Welladad. I think we have a lot of cards in our card pool that are specifically better than Alex's. Alex tried to take advantage of a little zombie engine, but there really wasn't much potency to it. We have the addition of a singular copy of Mizuki, which is actually insanely good in this deck here. I'm actually going to fix one thing. We're going to end up taking out a Dust Tornado, and we're going to side an extremely powerful card in this deck against the right matchup. Dimension Fusion might come up, and it might be insane at the right moment. One of the things is, of course, Mizuki banishing itself to Breborn another zombie. Uh, that's already food for Dim Fizz. Being able to bring back stuff in general uh, can make for some really potent plays. Plague Spreader Zombie has a really good home in here. We got double Armageddonite to be able to sift through the majority of the deck. Dumping Krebons to fill the power well. And of course, dumping Plague Spreader is never too bad either. Level Eater is another free thing that we want to dump off a of painful choice. Paired with a card like Card of Safe Return, we can draw like infinite cards off the mix and just, you know, OTK Alex. And then Magical Scientist is also something that is extremely cheeky in this deck. Let me tell you, this is absolutely crazy to be able to pull it off a of last will out of nowhere, win games. Trap effects don't matter when you got Ryu Senshi up in the field. Bolter gets over any flip effects like Raiko, that might be a problem. Magical Scientist back then was really good, and it's just as good as it is now. Altogether, I think Alex's idea of Veladad was really good, but I think our card pool is just better. And I think this game that we played today really might reflect that. I feel like it's really solid. Can't go up against something like Gravekeeper. I'm pretty sure Banning Descendant kind of puts him in the same mentality like this deck is dead maybe it's not worth touching it and that's really good for us because a card like necro valley could actually really screw with some of our zombie strategies uh, especially the telekinetic power well now that that's off the table i feel like this choice uh is good against absolutely everything i'm feeling like a win today win number four would you believe it let's see if alex can contend all right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is what we are bringing to today's duel. I want to shout out E3 Yu-Gi-Oh! for helping me come up with this concoction because uh, this looks like a lot of fun. I figure we should try to take advantage of some of the chaos tools that we have. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, no, here we go. Chaos again. This is like a different chaos list than we've seen before. So cut me some slack, okay? There's some cool shit this deck can do. So let's go ahead and do the card by card. So we have our, our, just a handful of bombs, including BLS, Double Chaos Sork, a Dark Arm Dragon, as well as a Caius. And then we have some all-star chaos monsters, such as Gale, which also happens to be a tuner, which happens to be a starter striking out. The full three suite of DD Warrior Lady. This card's unlimited, ladies and gentlemen, and we've pulled multiple over the course of all the reprint sets that we've had. So I'm happy to be able to give this for a test drive. This card's just really annoying to deal with in a lot of instances. We have Dimensional Alchemist as well. Very sad we only pulled one of this. This was from a gold series, and it was a gold rare. But nonetheless, Dimensional Alchemist in a chaos deck is pretty sick because of the recursion capabilities. There's some neat stuff we can do with this card. Speaking of neat cards, cards. We're also on two copies of Junk Synchron because we are able to resurrect cards such as our Magician of Faith, such as our Raiko, and with cards like Tsukiyomi, we can flip those down, flip them up, and get additional value even after we've already used them one time. Maybe they've been destroyed by battle. So Junk Synchron does more than just actually make level 5 Synchro monsters. It's able to actually get a lot of value as well in this deck. We're playing some recruiters like 2 Tomato and 2 Angel to fetch whatever we need. Of course, we have Sangen as well. One Necro Gardener to be able to dump off a of Painful Choice, but just like a nice card all around anyway. And Plague Spreader's Zombie is another tuner to allow us to access our synchro pool. That's it for the monsters. There's a lot of them, 23. The spells, we have Double Book, a Brain Con, a Giant True Nade, a Feather Duster, an Instant Fusion, an MST. Painful Choice, uh, this in this deck I think is absurd because depending on whatever bombs we have, we can just dump everything and basically just go off. Pot of Greed, Premat, Regeki, Rhoda, and Snatch Shield, and just four traps, Bottomless Ring, and Torrential Tribute. The extra, we have a few targets for Instant Fusion, but honestly, I think Thousand Eyes is the main one. Depending on if we have maybe a synchro play, we have a three, a four, and a five accordingly but we'll see. Uh, they also happen to be dark, which is convenient. Then we, for the Synchros, we have a Cataster, a Black Rose, a Black Wing, a Dragon, a Black Wing Armor Master, because both Gage and I have been playing Gale lately, and so there is a universe where if, like, I take his Gale or use my Gale that we can summon this, because it just needs a Black Wing Tuner. So this card is just not bad. We have a Brio, a Magical Android, a Mistworm, a Psychic Life Transfer, a Red Dragon Archfiend, and Double Stardust. The side deck, my thinking is that if I'm going to hit something like Bora the Spear, he hits something like Gravekeeper's Descendant. I don't think his Gravekeeper package is, like, that good 
good, but my thinking is he'll just default to something like Monarch because that's what he was playing like the last few episodes going into it. So if he's going to play Monarch, I have like 12 cards in here just to absolutely ruin his day. We have DD Crows for the frogs. We have Kaiku for like the whole deck. We have removal in the form of Dark Hole and Double Smashing Ground. We have Dust Tornado in case he's playing some background run sense. And then we have Double Masquerade Strip, Triple Pulling the Rug. Like this might be overkill in all honesty, but I'm thinking he's going to play Monarch. So I just want to have everything possible to make sure that we just win the match and get out of the banning because I think that's just for the better. So I'm happy to give this deck a test drive. I can't wait to see how it performs. Ladies and gentlemen, let's not make you wait any longer. It's time to duel. Gage, 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 Duelist Revolution. Uh, I don't know how much of a revolution this set was for today's episode, but the real revolution was in the banning section today. Double banning doesn't happen very often in the progression series, but uh, how you feeling? I, you know what? Like I said, man, Bora hardly knew her. I got my revenge for the season one, all the shit you put me through. I'm happy enough. I can let it go. Uh, but, but I'm excited to see that you don't got Gravekeepers on your radar anymore without the Sendin. Yeah, I was thinking about it. I'm like, it's it's so hard at this point with bannings to figure out what we're going to ban for one another because we either have to ban a card that we both own or we have to go for like the peripheral one of random card that like helps like one of our like seven decks that we can play, right? And so I, I for me, I was like, all right, Gage, this has gone too far. I'm not going to let you do this to me with Black Wings ever again. So I just decided to put a knife in the Black Wings once and for all, which to be fair, I could still lose to like Sirocco beatdown. That's pretty <laughs> doable, but <laughs> yeah. uh, we'll see. We'll see. I, I am excited to see though now that like Black Wings are uh, neutered even more now than they were before, what strategies we're going to bring to the table now. Unfortunately though, with today's set, uh, Kind of, I feel like RJ puts it best. A lot of people feel like this set was really good in retrospect, but in all honesty, it has like three cards. <laughs> it does, and the three cards are like some of the most iconic cards of like, I think the new age of Yu-Gi-Oh coming in. I agree. In. Cards like Effect Veiler was huge, Pot of Duality, Solemn Warning. These are all haymakers, like legendary cards yeah. from back in the day. But uh, yeah, you, you're kind of right. There's not, not too much <laughs> over. You're the one that had to read all about it, so I'm sure you kind of figured that out as you read through the What list. do you mean? I'm playing three copies of Summoning Curse in today's episode. Uh, you know, just a fantastic uh, staple of 2015 Yu-Gi-Oh, right? Yeah, Corey McDuffie would be proud, bro. <laughs> he would be. He would be. Rest in peace, buddy. Rest in peace. Let's go ahead and shout the patron. Anthem of the world. Thank you for the support. And buddy... I just, I got to get out of the banning. I, I don't know how much more I could take this. And rock, paper, scissors, not off to a good start. Right, I get the pick, though. I mean, I'll, <laughs> I'm not making mistakes like you were last time. <laughs> I'll, I'll decide to go second. I still think it's the best here. Take my yeah. free card. I do best think it's ideal as well. All right. I, I, I'm going to be, I'm going to try to be on my A game this time. I feel like the last all few right. episodes I've been like out of it. So we'll we'll see here. Uh, all right. We'll go stand by main. And uh, I've, got, I've got a nice, simple turn for you, buddy. I'm just going to go T set and pass. Pass. Go ahead. Ooh, man, not scary enough for me. I'll draw for turn. Stand by in the main phase. See what you're cooking up. All right, man. This is going to be one of the most powerful activations of the season so far. I'm going to start off with the painful choice. Okay. All right. We're off to the, the painful start here. Let's see All what right, you're dumping. Alex, you, are you ready to see what I'm on today? I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. Honestly, if you dump like Vayu, I'm going to be like crying. Here's what I'm going to uh, select for you, okay? Okay, what do you got? I'm going to pick a copy of Krebons. Okay. I'm going to pick a copy of Krebons. Oh, we're playing my deck. <laughs> I see. Okay. I'm going to pick a copy of Krebons. Sure, that's fine. Would <laughs> you like to go for I... Plague Spreader as the fourth one here? Yeah, I'm going to go with a copy of Plague Spreader. And then to top it off, Alex, I'll go with a copy of Level Eater. Okay. Uh, I hate every single one of these cards, so... We're really getting to the point where painful choice is just uh, truly painful now. It's not yeah. like before where it's like, oh, yeah, here's like the best spell out of the five you dump, and then you never see the rest for the rest of the game. All these cards have incredibly good value. I'm just going to give you the level eater. I figured. I'll take Yeah, it. it's like... I don't really feel like there's like that good of a choice here. I don't want to give you plague because then you get to like use it twice technically, if that makes sense. So I feel like it's just kind of better to only give you one activation on it. So we'll see. Let's see what else you got. All right. I'm going to start with telekinetic power. Well, <laughs> they're all coming summon, back. I'm summoning back the three Krebons from the bin. All three of them. Okay. So you're going to take uh, 300 times level. So 300 times six. So 1800 big ones. Oh man. Hardly a cost to get back three of one of the I best know. tuners in the game. To go plus two seems pretty yeah. good. Uh, I'll summon Goblin Zombie. Sure. 
All right, cool. Uh, I will Synchro Summon with Krebons and Goblin Zombie into Bryonic, Dragon of the Ice Barrier, and I'll Oops. mandatory trigger the Goblin Zombie. It's fine. Goblin Zombie. See, this is what I was trying to do last episode. Yeah. It just didn't See, happen. <laughs> this is where the value comes in because I have a card that you don't. I'm able to get Mizuki That's off pretty of good. Uh, the, the Goblin Zombie here, which is pretty massive when I pair it with Brio here in a yeah. second. For my Bryonic, Dragon of the Ice Barrier, I will use its effect one time at the moment here and i will target your face down sure okay uh i'll use the effect again i'll just pitch the level leader and i'll t target your face down monster too it's fine by me okay uh i'll activate mizuki to bring back the goblin zombie sure god this card's really not once per turn that's awesome it's um, not it's crazy i'm gonna go for another six with the let me make sure actually hold on let me do some mathematics real quick Okay, yeah, I'm overthinking this. Okay, uh, I'm going to activate Plague Spreader in the grave, actually. I'm going to stack this card to the top of my deck. Okay. We'll bring back the, the Spreader Zombie. And then I will banish him and the Goblin Zombie. I'll make Iron Chain Dragon. And I'll trigger the Goblin Zombie again. Sure. Okay. Uh, off of this Goblin Zombie, I'll just grab a Spirit Reaper from deck to hand. Seems pretty good. I don't know how much more you got going on over there. I got I got moves. I got schmooves. Um, I'll level eat off of the Brionic. Just to summon this back. Sure. Make him a level then, five. Yeah, I'll go battle phase. We'll go in with everything here. So go in with everything. Six, 12, 12. 24, 23, and 25. Not dead, but Barely alive, close. yeah. Uh, and then we'll go main phase two. I will take the iron chain and the Krebons, put them into Stardust Dragon. Seems pretty good. And then... Five, six, seven, eight. I'm gonna get another eight. <laughs> nah, I'll, I'll just set a card and I'll pass. See, like, I, everyone was giving me shit for this deck last week. And I'm like, look what this deck can do. This, oh, and then never, <laughs> you, not, apparently not good enough. God damn it. My draw was sick, too. This deck can too. do some cool well, stuff. Yeah, yeah it can, I guess. All right. Fucking ring. Exciting game, two. game one, bro. Telekinetic power level. How old card? I'm so I'm not I'm mad about that last game, but I'm more upset that that's like what my deck could have been doing in the previous episode. And it just wasn't. But you know I don't know what they Mizuki, say, bro. So. You know what they say? It's not the deck; it's the pilot. Clearly, <laughs> I think clearly the, that's the case. I clearly, think I'm the right I will guy let you know. Right I will let you know if that set was not Ring. I actually was in that game, but Ring just like clearly just ended the game for me. Uh, I'll go second, and uh, hopefully we can have a much better game this time around that doesn't immediately end. Although I'm sure Gage fans love that episode <laughs> or that game. So let's see what you're going. Doesn't not get again. easier, man. The, oh man, the choice Lock. has never been so difficult. All right. <laughs> Okay, well, um... At least uh, you're going first, right? There's yeah, no battle right. phase. I'm not yeah, dying, right. so I feel at least a little bit better about this. Okay, all right. I can start loading up the bin here. I'll dump a, a Krebins. Yeah, go ahead. I know what you're dumping. I'm not dumping. dumping. I'm, maybe I'm dumping all three Krebins. Maybe I'm not. I don't know. We'll go level eater. I'll pull the plague spreader out as well. Those are the big boys you want in the bin, right? I'll throw Mizuki in the mix as well. I will throw the third Krebins in there. That's Which the second Krebins, but... Second, whatever, you know. Uh, I can't count. This is like the same thing as before, for the most part. I'm gonna give you the Mizuki. The Mizuki? All right, I'll take him. Yeah. <clears throat> you have to get him back into the graveyard. At I least. do. I do. I gotta set one card here. I'll set another, and I'll just pass. Go ahead. We'll draw. Uh, we'll go main one. Let's start with good old Pot of Greed. I'm gonna yep. need that this game. Yep. For certain. Okay, uh, not too bad, actually. Not too bad. So, could have just set the Mizuki. Just want to get it into the grave. It's a possibility. All right, let's see, what you're, uh, let's see what you're cooking up over there. I'm in a normal Kaiku. Powerful card. Uh, <clears throat> Kaiku is fine, yeah. Let's try for battle. Let's see where we're hitting. Um, yeah, that's fine. It's Goblin Zombie. Sure. And I will utilize the Goblin Zombie effect. Uh, you will. Okay, you get to add a zombie from deck to hand with, uh, what is it, 1,200 or less defense? 1,200 or less defense. <clears throat> Pyramid Turtles off the table. I will pick up Spirit Reaper from deck. Could you imagine? That'd be so good. <laughs> uh, we'll just go second main. Another hand is Reaper, Mizuki, two unknowns, going to draw to a third. I'll just pass. Okay, um, during the end phase then. Wait, well, no, here, I'll draw for turn. Stand by main. End phase? Are you going to, like, power well in end phase? No, I'm still going to make this play, I think, though. This might be right. Um, yeah, end phase, I'm going to wing blast. I'll pitch the Mizuki, and I'll stack your Kaiku. Okay, so in main phase, uh, away he goes. Nice. Um, 
All right, Alex, for my next trick, I will normal summon Spirit Reaper. Uh, yuck. That's annoying. I'm just going to go battle phase with the Reaper and go three. I'm going to think here. Uh... Think gores? <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. So I don't know anything in your hand now because you pitched the Mizuki and you summoned the Reaper. Mm -hmm. uh, that's kind of annoying. I'll take the three. That's fine. Okay, cool. And I'll rip a random. We'll go for this one. You fucker. You I'm asshole. nice. I am so <laughs> nice. Damn. Okay, so oh, got... my God. That's a sick one. That's All a right, good so one. we got to counter Kaiko off the top now. Okay, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to activate Plague Spreader. I will top this card, and I'll summon Plague Spreader back. Uh, yeah, I guess that's fine. Sure. And I'll synchro with these two, and I'll make a Ally of Justice Cataster. Okay. All right. I know what I'm getting off the top next turn. This might not have been good. I don't know if this was the right play. This seems rough. I'll just um, I'll just pass to you. All right. Sure. Uh, I'll draw. Stand by main. Uh. It battles a non-dark monster, huh? Is uh, convenient for me, I suppose. I'm trying to be cute and do everything that I want to do in a turn, and I just don't know if I can. You're going to be drawing the card you stacked off of Plague last turn, so that's kind of convenient for me. Okay, uh, I think there is a way to do this. It's just not the cleanest way that I wanted to. So uh, it's fine. We will still go with it anyway. Uh, I'm going to start by DD Crowing your Crebons. Okay. I'll do your Crebons, actually. I'm going to do your uh, Bazooki. The Mizuki that. instead? Oh, that's what I would have yeah. picked too. Okay. I mean, it's not gonna matter. That may that may shock you here. Uh because okay. we're gonna we're gonna bring out Chaos Sword. Oh, oh <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. pretty good. All right. So the BLS out the hand kinda helped a little bit. Yeah. So well, yeah, it got me the light, so I'm not gonna complain. We'll banish him, I'll normal mm. Kaiku, we'll get in for eighteen, and then I'll take out the goblin zombie and one of the crepons. Yeah. Damn. Uh yeah. and that'll be my turn. Go All ahead. Right. And I know what I'm drawn into. I'm in trouble. Um stand by main. Yeah. I wanted to keep the crow in hand just to, like, actually use it reactively, but I think this is just cleaner than anything else I could have done. I'll just set a dude and I'll pass. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, we'll draw. That's not the worst. Uh, is there a way that I can just kill you here? You're on, what, 62? Uh, yes, there is. Is my math right? Uh, yeah, I think you're dead. Uh, we will go normal gale. Yep. I'll instant fusion. Mm -hmm. Let's go for our flame ghost. <laughs> the flame ghost. The, the flame ghost. He's coming in clutch. We'll go Brio. Never talk shit of my boy flame ghost again. I know. Yeah, I fine. talked shit about him before, and he's been coming in handy. Yep. Uh, we'll just bounce this. Yep. And then uh, this is game here. 23-23. So. That is game. All right. We'll yep. go game three. All right. All right. We got there. Man, Alex, it's crazy how one singular Kaiku can take <laughs> down one of the most powerful cards in all of Yu-Gi-Oh! Painful Trace, bro. Yeah. Ripped apart my graveyard. I didn't get the chance to use any of the stuff I wanted to. Um, trying. We're trying. I was telling you during side decking, these games have been tense because both of our decks can just kill out of oh, absolute yeah. Oh, yeah. thin air. And it's so scary. So... It's game three will be a good one. I imagine I'm going to be uh, going first You here. are, man. I'm electing you to go first. Try to set up the best defenses you can. I'll be able to tear uh, it. Yeah, best defenses I can. Let's see how many cards I'm going to be setting. Oh, boy. Not <laughs> not many. I'll tell you that. It's uh, it's going to be uh, a one and a two oh, and an over to man, you, buddy. Dude, go I'm ahead. sorry. Draw for turn. Do you have a painful choice for the third <laughs> game in a <laughs> Bro. row? I do. It's just glued I, your I, hand. I, do. I don't oh know how I opened God. it three games in a row. It's actually you see this kind guy of here on the right of painful choice? That's how I feel right now. It's just agony. Absolute <laughs> agony. Kind of yeah, insane, go ahead. Dude. Um, mm, I got to think what I want to... I'm surprised you have to think. I feel like this would be a pretty easy choice You think it you. would be, right? You think it'd be pretty easy. It's, it's Unless you opened like hard. triple Krebons or like Mizuki and like everything you want in the grave is in your hand. That would be the ideal circumstance. All right, well, I'm going to start. I'll put all three Krebons in the bin. Okay, none of those are in your hand. They are not. Um, I'll dump an Armageddon Knight. The last card I will dump, I'll dump a Sangin. Okay, so that's strange. So to me, you you could have a hand that's Mizuki, Plague, 
level leader and then two other cards I don't know I guess that's not like impossible because like why wouldn't you just dump any of those if those were all options I don't know what else is in your hand obviously these are just like very strange choices I guess with this I'll give you one of the Krebons okay I will take one because I don't really want to give you armor or Sangin so okay all right Zuki Plague, Level Eater, Krebons, Two Unknowns. Is that the hand? I'm just going to set a card, and uh, I'm going to pass. Wow, am I right? Is that your hand? Okay. Uh, Sure, I'll draw. Uh, Now the question is, how do I deal with it? What would you set if that is your hand? You'd probably set Plague, so then you actually have a line, or at least like an extra extender, because... Krebons, Mizuki, Level Eater are all normals. I'm going to flip Plague Spreader. Okay. I'm just going to poke it. Okay. It's, uh, it's Pyramid Turtle. Pyramid Turtle. All right. I'll take a thousand. Interesting. I'm surviving uh, the turn. That's what I'm happy about. Second main, you're 100% surviving the turn. I will just pass. Okay. Go ahead. So you have a pretty reactive hand. You probably have a crow tucked away somewhere in there. None of those targets are appealing for crow. That's probably why. Your hand must be, like, super reactive. What are you waiting on? You don't have a line to kill me. That's why we're playing slow Yu-Gi-Oh! right now. Um, all right. I'm going to I'm gonna put the turtle to attack. Sure. I'll go battle phase with the turtle and attack into your plague spreader. Take eight. It's fine by me. Okay. Main two. I will set one, and I will pass. Go ahead. Draw. Uh, setting again. You know, with how fast those first games went, I don't think I was expecting this first, this. <laughs> Final game to be such a no, slog. No, I was expecting this to be a 30-minute episode flat. <laughs> Just real yeah. quick, Sam's in and out the door, easy edit. <laughs> <laughs> what was my read earlier? Your hand is Krebs, Mizuki, uh, Level Eater, Plague. I think I'm going to pass. Oh, my God. What is your hand? <laughs> All right. I can ask you the same thing. Draw. Face down has been there since the start of the game. Could be Torrential. Um, to be fair, we haven't done much this game. Yeah, I know. I haven't been <laughs> committing many dudes to the board, which I've been purposely trying to play around this torrential tribute. If I commit a guy here, you flip it, you get max value. I bet that I'm just gonna have to bet it's not it. I'm gonna summon Armageddon Knight and use the effect. That's fine. Okay. I will dump the uh, the plague spreader that has been patiently waiting in the deck. All right, so he's not in your hand. I'll flip Mizuki. Okay, I was right with one of them. Yep, I'll go battle phase. This is a lot. Uh, what are we looking at? 12, 14, 17. So that's 26, 36, 43 total. Uh, what does that put me at? 19. 19? Yeah, I'll take it all. That's fine. <laughs> so nonchalant about it. You got me spooked. Okay. Uh, main phase two, I'm going to exceed into Baguska, the terribly yeah, tired right? to <laughs> <laughs> and win the game. That'd be the dream. Let's see here. I'm going to Reborn Plague and summon Baron to Fleur. <laughs> Why can't it just be that easy? Come on, like, there's no good tens. Tens don't it's exist. It's wild to think. Like, I was about to say, it's wild to think that Yu-Gi-Oh! didn't have, like, good generic tens until, like, 2019, 2020, was it? It was, it was ages. Nothing good, bro. Like, ah. Uh. I don't have a way to I know all the Leo Keeper, the Sacred Tree protectors out there are going to be like, what do you mean? Raccoons. It's crazy. Hand, it's fine. We'll we'll make it work. I'm just going to pass. Go ahead. You've been playing slow. you got to do something at this point. You've gotta i got to do, do something. something. You're not wrong. Raigeki. All right, main phase one. Yeah, yeah I do have okay, Raigeki. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Mizuki and the Pyramid Turtle in the bin, though. At least I get Mizuki <sighs> for later. That's good, right? I was about to say, it's not ideal, but we have to do what we have to do. Okay, I'm on 19, which is... Uh, Less than ideal, I'll be honest. You still got a bunch of cards in your hand that you're not really doing much to. I know you're trying to also play conservatively as well. I'm just so curious about, like, your hand has to be some turbo ass, bro. Like, you have to be waiting for me to make one big play. And, like, I don't know. Yeah, I, like, I don't know what you have. Like, <laughs> I'm, like, actually lost. I know your hand is still Krebs. I can assume you have the level leader in hand. I mean, you could have not. You could have dumped it. Or you could still have it in deck like you did with the Plague. Uh, I was right on the Mizuki. So then that's what, Krebs, Level Eater, three unknowns, I think. Could be reactive stuff of your own. Uh, you also just maybe don't want to commit too much. Uh, <clears throat> I think I got to commit something here. It's not pretty. I'm going to normal Junk Synchron, activate the effect. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if that's all you got, it's good enough for me. Bring out Plague, yep. and we'll hit you for 13. I'll take it, yep. Okay. Uh, and that's it for me. Good. Draw. Standby main. Okay. 
Uh, so I have to bet that you got a DD Crow. I don't know why you would think I would have a DD Crow. <laughs> uh, that should be the last thing on your lucky mind. Lucky guess, I have a bro. Crow. Lucky guess, I guess. I will go Mizuki target the Pyramid Turtle. All right, you sniffed it out. Okay. I do have. You want to get? I don't know why you would have thought that I would have DD Crow, but you know. All right, not too bad. It's too much value not to crow that. Yeah, so it's I agree. Step one complete. What's next? Play around the second DD <laughs> Crow in my head. <laughs> You've not used that back row the whole game. It can't be anything good. What? It has to be like the biggest bluff of the century. You've not. <laughs> I think you've been goaded into flipping it on everything. It's just. Okay, I'm going to normal summon goblin zombie. Sure. Okay, I'm going to activate the effect of plague spreader. I'm going to top this card. Second second DD crow? No, t no second DD crow. Okay. You're fine. So we'll get plague spreader back. On res here. What do you got? Uh, thinking. Uh, you still got four in hand. He plagued something back to the top, which is good for me if I can actually capitalize on it. I could actually potentially make you Goblin Zombie shuffle it back, which would be kind of cute. You have to get to that point, obviously. Uh, clearly, you didn't care about the card anyway, because if you go for a Synchro play here, Goblin Zombie will trigger. So uh, I'm going to book Plague Spreader. Okay. Okay, I still win this game then. All right, uh, I'll set the Plague Spreader. I will snatch Steel, target your Plague Spreader. Yep, figured you had something. And then uh, I'll send the Goblin Zombie, and this goes to your graveyard. Yep. I'll make Brio. You have your Brio. Yep. We'll go trigger Goblin Zombie. I'll yeah, you got it. It's fine. You just bounce and win. Yeah. yeah. No, my my hand was BLS Sork. I had no, no light. lights. No So many lights, lights in this fucking deck. Are you deck. sure you and do go? Because the last deck you played, I, you played one light, bro. You played no, Ryko. No, this deck, I have Shining Angels. I have Warrior Ladies. I have Dimensional Alchemist. I have so many lights in this deck. And th this time, I just... It, it didn't help, too, that the fucking... Uh, I, you're never going to hear me say this again. I wish Plague Spreader wasn't a zombie, so I could have done something with the <laughs> yeah, junk scene. Yeah, let's call... Let's yeah. make Plague Spreader zombie a yeah. different type bro <laughs> exactly exactly yeah and then gail was just the other card so i was just like bricking on all this and i'm like i have so many draws that unlock the rest of my hand i needed like any light monster you and did uh, i guess saying could connect, get me yeah. there i uh, i ended up yeah. drawing a dad that was dead after the painful choice that painful choice was so rough because you did call i had level eater mizuki plus like uh another one of the bad ones in my hand there's a krebs in your hand there's a too, krebs somewhere. there too so like the yeah. the painful uh choice i was actually like i'd really like you to give me a Krebons, and i'm glad you gave me yeah. if you would have given me the sangin i think there's like literally one other target in my deck that i don't even want to get off of. so, <laughs> that's funny yeah what were the other so i know one of these is Krebons. what's the last card? i uh, level leader oh yeah level yeah. leader duh mm. yeah so it sucks so if i would have just booked the goblin zombie instead if i would have just like tried to play around snatch steel then i probably wouldn't have lost that turn i don't think you would have actually but either I didn't normal summon, right? No, you, I think you, you did. You normal the goblins. Yeah, zombie. I think you would have lived another turn there. I would have lived because then what would you have done at that point? You'd have uh, a plague sitting there. Goblin zombie would be set. And then, yeah, yeah I'm just I don't think you could do yeah, anything else passing. with that. You're just passing. Yep. Yeah. And then I could go clean up, attack, attack. I draw into the Sangin. And then I can actually sink because I have tuners on the field. Yeah. I should have, uh, I, I was just immediately went for the plague because I figure, okay, if he has any chance of winning this, I have to cut you off Brio access. Yep. And I figure if you have an, ex it's more likely you have an extender to get a four out than to snatch steal my plague spreader to make Brio. Yeah. I think there's uh, a lot of so scenarios where you're not normally leaving a tuner on the board either, so might be like not something yeah. you first thought of either. Like, oh, I have two tuners just doing nothing on the board. Like, <laughs> well, well, my whole reason with the junk synchron play was just to get a guy on yeah, the field because yeah. I figure like, okay, if he tries to do something, I'm on low life. I can probably take a hit from junk synchron, and then if he tries to go all, I can book whatever he has, and then I'm good to go from there. But I could have also just let you sink for the Brio and then just booked the Brio before you had a chance to activate. But then I couldn't out the Brio. I literally had no way to out it with my hand because everything's under 1,400 Yeah, attack. No, that last hand was rough. I think both of our hands were pretty tough, so. bro. I opened five dudes. Uh, my hand was tough. I, I opened Okay, five choice. dudes <laughs> plus <laughs> painful <laughs> decision. But, but, but other than that, it was like, it's like I, I want to see the power spells. Uh, I want to see the well and stuff like that. If I would have saw the well, I had to, a way to clear up my graveyard to get the dad live. Of course. So it's like, yeah. man, getting yeah. the Krabons out the deck, easy part. Finding the well, not so easy. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, uh, that's and that was like the issue that I was running into as well. Is that like you don't uh, as well is you either have to have the issue of getting the Krebons into the graveyard or you have to find the telekinetic power wells to actually summon them back, right? And like sometimes you just like power well for one, and that's like okay, right? It's just an extender at that point. But if you're not going the distance and bringing back everything, it's not nearly as cool as it would be otherwise. Yeah. Um, it's cool that you have like double armor knight though, because I mean I think I only have like one. Mm -hmm. I don't uh, complain. But... You got you got dark graffer. <laughs> that's pretty good too. That's I do have Greffer. You don't have Greffer. But you have Mizuki. And I think Mizuki makes a really yes. big difference for this deck and its ability to really push uh, because otherwise it's, it's just really rough. Uh, yeah, I had the Kaikus in from the board as well as the DD Crows and everything too, but it just uh, it just wasn't enough. And clearly my, my lights are just nowhere to be found. Ooh, 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 bro, that would have been yeah. big too, I think, actually, right? No, because yeah. what, you booked the... The goblin zombie? No, I wouldn't have done too much in that state. No, because like if I had any light, I could have synced off either Junk Synchron and Plague with the light to summon something and then make BLS, and then you're just like dead at that point. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that would have... Uh, just seeing any of... I think I have like nine or ten lights in this deck. So just seeing one of those would have gotten me there. But uh, the Chaos Brickiness strikes again. So I know the, the comment section is going to be like, that's what you get for playing yeah, Chaos. Yeah, that's, that's no, why whatever. I retired the it's deck, fine. man. Maybe it's time for yeah, you to do the should same. Have. <laughs> I should have. I, 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 Keegan helped me build this deck. We thought it was oh, pretty sick. Right. It does a lot of cool you, shit. You, you but... get the big guns to help you out. I see. Yeah, apparently it wasn't big enough because uh, we still took the L, unfortunately. Man, I'm still stuck in the banning. This sucks. Yeah, four oh, win God. streak. I, I don't think I've ever four said that this streak. season yet. Yeah, that's crazy. I don't think you... Maybe the beginning maybe in the maybe very the beginning, beginning yeah, you no. these ones i felt yeah. like um the decks that i've just been picking up dude i feel like they're at full power like i feel like we're just legitimately playing like past edison, edison. format like, like, slightly like, past edison <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I just feel like we're playing legitimate decks um plus yeah. half of the band cards i know i have cards like um i have magical scientist still in this build uh i have card of safe return which is insane with level leader um sure. some of the cards that take like brain con and stuff like that are really really good just a, a pot of greed of course it just makes these decks like even better than they were before harpies feather dust oh of course yeah, yeah. Uh, like pre-mat too oh, like yeah. pre-mat's oh, not normally in, in too, edison yeah. either so yeah you can bounce it like with brio and stuff yeah it's crazy yeah. so all right buddy uh you've been ominously quiet about your wheel spin so i've what'd been you quiet get? for a reason it's not anything good i i spun a uh uh what a uh, wild card super rare which equates okay. in hidden arsenal to a common when we downscale it so <laughs> i i got i got myself a notario rose whip from hidden arsenal <laughs> too. oh nice. great so you can rose whip me later yes. when we're like in in 2022 yeah yeah Season when we get two. when we get there well i'll reconsider uh hopefully it was a good choice then but <laughs> no i didn't get anything too good so um yeah, yeah. no i mean d with D-Rev, I mean, the wheel could be pretty strong for you uh, for next That's episode. That's the hope. So I did end scary. up using one of my redoer tickets on Duelist Revolution. Did you? I ended up okay. worse than I started. I got <laughs> I got, I got, got no hollows on the first go-around, and then wow. I got some good rares, though. And then on the second go-around, I got the ghost rare, let me tell you. <laughs> Woo! I got the ghost the, rare. The quest. Yes, and, yeah. then, and then half of the good rares that I ended up getting the first time. It was not, it was not a so good funny. trade. That's so funny. Not a good trade. I, I got, like, no hollows in the first half, and then I got, like, a couple at the end. I got, like, the psychic uh like there's some 2400 level six synchro i got him he's like a secret rare mm -hmm. and a couple ultras oh, wait, but like overdrive teleporter no 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 no, 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 no. Okay, he's a yeah, he's yeah. a he's a synchro monster okay. he's like psychic something i don't okay. know he's just like 2400 it can like get bigger psychic yeah if you're not getting duality effect failure or warning it's just not even worth it in this set i didn't i have so many redoer tickets but i didn't burn it because i figured it's just better for a later set yeah. we got a while to go before we're in xyz era right like how long not, not I, too long i don't know I, I feel like not too long maybe like a couple months for the progression series but uh i mean the episodes go quick so we'll see so guys, that's going to wrap it up for another video. I really hope you all enjoyed. Let's go ahead and shout the patrons for all of their continued support. So shout out to Shout1317, Tim00x3, MBT Play Medulce, Moto Cameron Smith, Pony Stark, The Synchro Guy, Phoenix the Immortal, Dan the Manhoven, Richard Enormous, Draconic, Jordan Coons, Jesse Wood, Valen Jackson, Chris Hood, Little Fade Leaf, Dylan Hunter, Cody Bretz, Extremely Vulgar Man, Brody Eastwood, Carlos DT, Flannel Daddy, Inuna Taisho, Thanks for the Sleeves Dad, Max Twinkle Muncher, Matthew Brady, Dalton, Lubon Yodabon. I've tried reading cards before. It was horrible. Horrible, and my guinea pigs had to get me therapy. Helios 515, CMOS Chaos Cooking Draft, Cheeks McLafferty, Stolfin Amethyst, Wonder Waffle, MBT Cancel by All Community Soon, Cancel by All Committee Soon, Cancel by All Players Soon, Shrugzix, the Crystal Beast Enthusiast, Corvain, and Grey9. Thank you so much for watching the video, and we will see you next time.